Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome again to Victorious Living with my wife, Dr. Grace, and myself. We are in for a treat. We have a new series we're going to be presenting to you today called Regeneration. Uh, um, this is a powerful series that I know you're going to be blessed by. Dr. Grace, why don't you greet us? Yes, God bless you. We're so excited to be with you on today. And you know, the Word of God said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. It is wonderful when our old is past and the new is come. And that's what God does in our life. He makes new things happen for us. So stay tuned. There's a powerful word from the Lord for you. And, and we're going to go into this. Uh, it's called being reborn. Uh, today's message it deals with your daddy or your father. Uh, in the first part, um, you know, we've been, this whole series is based upon the fact that uh, uh, God says we must be born again. One of those first steps is being born with a new father. You know, the Bible says before we were uh, uh, saved, you were of your father, the devil. But now that we are reborn, God is our father. You're going to be blessed by this message. Let's go right into it. See, when we were first born, we were born to an abusive father. Let me preach in this place. Ephesians 2 and 2 says, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's where you were born. Uh, uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or behavior in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and, were and by nature the children of wrath, even of children. When a child is raised by an abusive parent that child will learn how to abuse oh y'all ain't working with a brother in this place when that child has been hurt that child will learn how to hurt and and so sometimes we enter relationships with people and we're trying to figure out why they are the way they are it is because they may have been in a situation that taught them to be that way you were born of your father. He is of the devil. He is a liar and the father thereof. And you will do what your daddy did. So if he abused you, hurt people hurt people. Y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. Abuse people abuse people. And a lot of times what we do is we react to how we were born or raised. I am preaching in this place. We react and we react. We, we, David said, I was shaping in iniquity and conceived in sin. When he says shaping in iniquity, that's your daddy. And conceived in sin, did my mother conceive me? That's your mom. We're going to talk about your mom in just a minute. But let me stay on your daddy. Y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. Now, I ain't trying to play the dozen, but I want to tell you about your daddy. Like father, like son, who's your daddy? See, if I break that down a little bit more, in John 8, he said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. <laughs> he was a murderer from the beginning, so that explains a lot. <laughs> he abode not in the truth. That explains a lot, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, <laughs> for he is a liar, and the father of it. <laughs> and so, when we were born, when we were born, there is a body, a soul, and a spirit. Most of our behavior comes from what we were shaped into. That is your, the way your emotional aspects. You learn those emotions. But there is a spiritual part of you. You are body, soul, and spirit. Now, the spiritual part of you comes from Satan. Y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. He has filled this world and taught your spirit to work want what it wants, to do what it do, to act. And it is your spirit that causes your emotions to arise. And then your body acts upon that. You are of your father, the devil. Now, regeneration, everybody say regeneration. Regeneration requires emancipation. Stop. Regeneration requires emancipation. If I'm going to be regenerated to a new father, I must be emancipated from the old one, from the one that was a liar, from the one that abused me, from the one that got me acting out of myself, showing my tail, showing my behind, from the one that got me cussing and fornicating and do all of that. If I'm going to be regenerated by a new daddy, I got to be emancipated from the old one. Y'all ain't working with a brother in the 
this place. Uh, you can't have two daddies preach right there. You can't have two fathers. God said you will love one and hate the other. You will do what one says and despise the other. You cannot have two masters. You can't have two daddies. So if you're going to be regenerated, uh, you got to emancipate. Somebody say emancipate. Uh, you got to have emancipate to regenerate. Uh, but God, uh, Ephesians 2 and 4, I'm going to preach right here, right here, right here. Ephesians 2 and 4 says, uh, but God, who is rich in mercy uh, for his great love wherein he loved us, uh, even when we were dead in sins with that old, no good, abusive daddy, he quickened us together with Christ uh, for by grace are you saved. See, it ain't, you, you can't emancipate yourself from one if you don't connect with another. Preach right there. The Bible says uh, when a spirit goes out of a man, uh, that spirit will go to and fro. I'm going to preach right there. Uh, and it will try to find another place. Uh, but that spirit uh, knows you. Uh, so when that wicked spirit has no other place to go, he coming back home. Uh, he Because he knows home. Uh, but he knew you kicked them out the last time so he brings seven more demons with him and that person because they are the Bible says swept and garnished what he means they are empty in other words you emancipated yourself from your old daddy but you didn't take on the new one you said I'm sick and tired of being this way so you emancipated yourself from that devil but you didn't fill yourself with a new God so that old devil came back with reinforcements. He said, you kicked me out the last time, but I'm coming back with power this time. And so every time you do that, it gets worse and worse and worse. So you go from one to seven. You're seven times worse. You kick them out. Seven go and they bring back seven more with them. So now you had 49 times worth of devil. I'm going to preach by myself. You kick 49 out. Uh, they come back with 343. Uh, now you're 343 times worse. I'm preaching all by myself than you used to be. Uh, you kick the 343 out uh, and they come back with 2,401. Do the math. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and now you are literally 2,000 times worse uh, than you used to be. Uh, and this is why people who said I love you, I love you, are now trying to kill you are stabbing you friends hurting each other co-workers you got that job and you thought it was a great job now they're trying to get you fired because it gets worse and worse you kicked the 2,000 out now you at legion level when Jesus said who are you to that man in the, in, 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 in the, in the graveyard he said my name is legion for we are many that is almost 7,000 unclean spirits operating in, around, and through you, through your flesh that you were born in and being shaped over and over and over and over by your daddy who is a liar and the father of life. He is a murderer. That's why we got so much crazy stuff going on in our world is because we got too many legions folk. We got folk where they used to be nice but now they're crazy. I always thought something was wrong with them. You need to, oh, y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. But for the grace of God who saved you, you could be in that same condition, that same position. And so God saw you in your mess. And he said, I will by grace save save you. I know you are a hot mess because of the daddy you've been living with all your life, but I'm going to adopt you anyway. Y'all still ain't catching me. Anybody in here adopted anybody? Do I have some parents that adopted? Then you know what I'm talking about. Because when you adopt a child, you adopt their problems. You adopt their issues. See, it's one thing to birth a child yourself because you can put whatever in that child you want. But when you adopt the child you take all the abusive mess that they daddy or they mama or their lack of caring put in them and now you got to deal with that and that's why God said for by grace 
I'm putting up with your mess because I know that your former daddy abused you. He put that mess in you. He made you bitter. He made you angry. He put that fornication. He put that lasciviousness. Pastor Will, you are preaching. Y'all act like I'm not preaching, but I'm preaching right now. But, 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 but God said, for by grace, I took you on and I allowed you to emancipate yourself from that no good daddy and I became your daddy we tried to get rid of the old one but we couldn't but David put it like this when I would do good evil is present with me oh wretched man am I who's going to deliver me from this and Jesus came on and said your daddy going to do it he said oh thank God because of Christ Jesus because if any man be in Christ he is a new creature look at your neighbor and say who's your daddy who's your daddy have you he says here behold I was shaping in iniquity that's your daddy and in sin did my mother conceive me in sin did my mother conceive me my daddy shaped me my mother conceived me my daddy was my nurture my, my mama was my nature she determined some things the father is who shaped me the mother is who made me somebody say hallelujah and let me tell you what your mother did now y'all stay with me I'm gonna tell you who your mama is now just a minute Ezekiel 16 and 5 says this none I pitied me to do any of these unto me to have compassion upon me but thou was but thou was cast out into an open field in the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born at the moment you was born you were thrown out into a field your mama didn't care for you and when I passed by thee I saw thee polluted in thine own blood. Mama just threw you out there. I'm preaching all by myself and said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. You was intended to die. Everything that's been happening to you has been trying to kill you. But God said live and not die. If your father was the devil, your mama is this world. And this world has no pity for you. This world will chew you up and spit you out. If you don't believe me, leave home too quickly before you've been trained by your parents. And see, won't this world chew you up? I got some testimonies in here. See, won't this world chew you up and spit you out? This world has no pity for you. You will think you, you get a little frustrated with your natural mom because she got rules. And Miss May May down the street say, oh, you can come and stay at my house house and live with your boyfriend and all of that but Miss May May is going to chew you up and spit I'm preaching all by myself preach Pastor Will I think I will because this world don't really care for you they will act like they care for you yeah they ain't treating you right and so you go out there into that world I'm preaching right there and this world will chew you up it will destroy you you think you can make it by yourself God didn't gave you a good mother and a good father but you don't want to live under the rules and the disciplines of a good father and you step out into that world too soon and you think you know what you're doing and you don't have the knowledge, step one, and then you don't have the Holy Ghost, step two. This world who is your mama, I'm going to preach right here, don't really care about you. They act like they care about you. But after you done had about four or five babies, after you done become an issue, they will kick you out, leave you in your blood, to die they will throw you have you tricking just to make a living they will give you a hit tell you to take this is gonna make you feel good they just setting you up because they want to kill you they will have you in jail they will have you locked up they will have you out there by yourself when you got a mama that loves you and a daddy that loves you this world will kill you it will destroy you it will chew you up Spit you out, throw you on the ground in your own blood to die. And God will walk right past you and still say, live. Oh, can I preach to five people that the world been beaten up? God told me to tell you they left you for dead, but live. 
Somebody say hallelujah, live. Somebody say it again, live. So I said, well, God, if the wicked mama is the world, who's the good mama? God said, go over to Ephesians. And he said, husbands, the daddy, love your wives, the mother, as I, God the father, has loved the church. Oh, y'all didn't even catch that. God said, now I know you y'all didn't have issues with church, but God tells me to tell y'all that the church in its purest form is the mama that I gave you so that you could be healed, delivered, and set free. I'm going to preach right here. I'm going to preach right here because God said in the church, I gave you apostles. I gave you prophets. I gave you teachers. I gave you pastors. I gave you the fivefold ministries. What did I give them for you for? For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the perfecting of of the body of Christ I gave you the church now what happened is the devil came into the church and tried to turn you against the church and say I don't need the church look at your neighbor and say you need your mama Say it again, you need your mom. See, I know, I know, I know that the devil will make us think that church hurt and church drama is the issues that we are struggling with. And so we quit the church. But let me be real clear. Just because there's some issues at church don't mean that the church is not the mama that God gave you. Because God said, in the church, I will give you pastors. In the church, I would give you prophets. In the church, I would give you evangelists. In the church, I would give you teachers. I would give you pastors. And he said it would be for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. I know, I know some of you have been hurt in the church, but don't, 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 don't mistake being hurt at home from being hurt by your mama. Let me try that one more again. Don't mistake being hurt by one of your siblings from being hurt by your home in which mama and daddy has worked real hard for you to have a good life. I'm going to try that one more again. Just because the Negro, I mean the person, I mean the joker sitting next to you didn't act like their mama had been teaching them that don't mean mama wasn't doing her job they was just hard headed so don't fall out with mama because you got a bad hard headed brother or a hard headed sister my help is in the church that's why God says forsake not the assembly of the righteous why because you need a daddy but you also need a mama because in your mama's house I'm going to preach right there in your mama's house the first thing that's going to happen even with your issues is that God somebody say hallelujah God is going to bring you perfection everybody say perfection that means completion see don't ever leave home too early because there's still some lessons that mama got to teach you that's why she's the nurturer She's trying to show you something. And God said in the church, I'm going to perfect. I know you feel like you're grown. You got a little mustache coming down your lip. You're feeling your little self. Got a little breast that's popping out. And you think you're somebody. But I heard God say, stay right there until the lesson is complete. Until you have finished your course. Somebody say hallelujah. So he's going to perfect you and then he's going to work you. Everybody say the church is for ministry. God says I gave you a gift and I need you to work it. Why is that pastor? Because in the church is where those that don't have 
your gift. We'll receive your gift. That's why in the church, we work our ministries. We work them for each other. Some of you are about to make a mistake. But if you get a person who has the gift of discernment in the church, they will perfect you and work that thing out on the inside of you. Somebody say hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. I feel my help coming. Y'all looking at me, but I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel my power. Somebody say hallelujah. I'll be all right. I'm going to be all right because I've been regenerated because I know who my daddy is and I know who my mama is. And so I come to be perfected. I come to do ministry and I come to get my help. Somebody say help. See, I know you think you can do it all by yourself, but God says where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in the midst of them. You've been going through hell all week long, but when my people come together and touch and agree, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a little bit of power, and you got a little bit of power, but I came here today to touch my power with your power, and we getting ready to blow up. We getting ready to expand, because one could chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight, and we got 500 in here. We getting ready to tell the devil no. We getting ready to go to the mountaintop. We getting ready to take the power. Cast him out of my home. Cast him out of my marriage. Cast him out of my family. Cast him out of my money. Cast him out of my job. Somebody scream in this place with your power. I got it, Pastor. I need a regeneration. I need a new daddy. I need a new mom and say neighbor when I get a new daddy and I get a new mom then I will be a new me everybody say reborn with my new spirit therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things have become new you see I'm a new creature because I emancipated my old daddy Satan and I was reborn and my new daddy God the father look at your neighbor and say neighbor I went from abuse to love now I don't know about you but that sounds a lot better somebody say hallelujah say it again hallelujah then I was emancipated from my old mom to my new mom that is I told this world deuces I told this world I'm out and I'm going to my new mom that is the church that is the church of the living God in which your daddy said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail he didn't tell me they wouldn't form weapons but they wouldn't go win they wouldn't go we look at your neighbor and say neighbor I get to go from uncaring to perfecting and I'm about to get right I'm about to get right I'm about to get right and finally we go from an old creature to a new creature somebody say a new me say again a new me old mama and old daddy had me angry all the time had me bitter all the time had me hateful had me depressed but today I'm gonna get regenerated with my new mama with my new daddy and I'm coming out with a new creature I'm coming out as a new person I wish three people would just turn around and say I'm coming back new I'm coming back new I got a new daddy I got a 
a new mama and I'm getting ready to have a new me. I'm getting ready to reborn, reborn by the spirit, reborn by the power, reborn by the Holy Ghost. Some people ain't gonna even know you. Let me start. But I feel something. I feel some people are hungry for this new regeneration. I told you the beginning, which is the who. Next week, I'm going to show you how. Thank you for tuning in. I, play, I pray that you've been blessed by this message. I want you to get this entire series called Regeneration, Being Reborn Again. Uh, let's pray. If you don't know the Lord, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God. You died for my sins and you rose again. This day I receive salvation. That simple prayer saves you. All Christians have been through it and if you've accepted Christ today, you are now a born again Christian. Get to a good Christian church home. We'd love for you to come visit us here in Victorious Praise. We're right between Raleigh and Dorman Research Triangle Park. God bless you and we'll see you on next week. Listen to these words, see God save me yeah. from myself when no one else was around. And it was only by His grace, His mercy, His favor, cause I know I don't deserve all the love He showed oh. me, how He let me know, oh. He never gonna leave my side. From the Shepherd Support Desk to your desk, write down these two important dates, April 8th and April 9th, 2017. We will be celebrating our leaders, Pastor Will and Dr. Grace Nichols, 19 years of kingdom service. You don't want to miss this powerful celebration, so let your pen connect to your paper and write it down.